Buy to let investments is a popular option for many. In fact, me and my brother looked into it a few years ago. We wanted to buy a property and then rent it out to others, start earning a little bit of income and then become filthy rich. And then we did some research and realized we couldn't actually afford it and then this dream swiftly came to a close. But this disappointment actually turned out to be a catalyst for me as I began to learn more and more about personal finance and I really wanted to understand how I could better use my money. So essentially this moment actually birthed what would eventually be financial madness. So you're welcome. But yeah, anyway, I did actually receive a few questions last week about whether or not buy to let properties was a good investment. So let's understand how buy to let actually works, look at the pros, look at the cons, and to see whether or not this is a good investment option for us. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. A buy to let property is a house or a flat that a person can get if they want to start earning rental income from that property. So this means you buy a house without the intention to live in it, but instead you rent it out to tenants and they will pay rent and you will receive this rent as an income. Now I have done videos in the past on the many different ways that you can get onto the property ladder, mainly using the many different schemes that the government have opened up to us. However, the key caveat on this is that all of these schemes do require you to live in this property. They are never open to buy to let. And that is because the process of getting a buy to let is very different to getting a property that you actually want to live in. So the key differences are, so the first one being is that if you do require a mortgage to get a buy to let property, the deposit requirements are a lot higher. The typical minimum deposit requirements is at 25%, although this can vary, but it is considerably more than if you were to get a mortgage where you choose to live in it. Most buy to let mortgages are interest only mortgages, which means that you can expect that your repayment plans be quite small because you're just paying off that interest. However, you should be wary that at the very end of your mortgage term, you will be expected to pay off the capital in full, either with money that you have saved up or potentially you can sell the house on and pay off the mortgage that way. Another difference is that for most lenders, they will ask that you are already a homeowner if you want a buy to let mortgage. This is because buy to let is considered a risky venture for most lenders. So the fact that you are already an existing homeowner and you have a good credit history, of course, um, that alleviates some of that risk that they might have. That is not to say that if you are a first time buyer, meaning that you've never owned a property in your life, you can still get buy to let mortgages, although the options available to you will be considerably less. I am mentioning first time buyers here because I know that this is a popular idea for many. Um, I have a feeling because I've grown up in London, a lot of my friends and a lot of people in my network uh, consider the house prices here redonkulous uh, and they're not wrong. So the idea of let's buy a house maybe somewhere a bit more affordable elsewhere in England or in the UK and then we can rent it out and earn an income that way, that idea seems a lot more achievable than actually buying a property here in London. So yeah, I don't know if this is just a London thing. I know a lot of my friends uh, have thought about this. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section down below if you are a first time buyer and you are looking into buy to let properties as an option for you. And then the final key difference is that the maximum amount of money that you can get from your lender will be linked to the rental income that you can expect to receive. So this is very different to the normal mortgages where it's typically based on your income that determines how much is the maximum you can borrow from the lender. With buy to let, the lenders typically need your rental income to be at least 25 to 35% above the mortgage repayments. So for example, if your mortgage repayments is at 1,000 pounds per month, your rental income needs to be at least 1,250 or 1,350 to fit this 25 to 35% bracket. Although this does vary between lender and lender, but this is just an average. Alexander Hall has a great calculator to check this affordability. Uh, you just pop in the value of the property, the deposit amount that you have, and it will tell you the rental income that you should aim to get um, when you obviously rent it out to others. I'll put a link in the description box down below for that calculator. There is an exception to this rule and this is down to if you are a first time buyer, because you are seen as more of a riskier entity uh, to these lenders with buy to let, um, they will be checking your income to see your mortgage affordability. So as a starting point, I would take your income, times it by 4.5, and this is typically what you can aim to borrow from a lender. 
By the way, if you are enjoying this video, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe with notification bell on. I release a video every single week talking about all things personal finance for the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. So let's look at some of the pros when it comes to buy to lets. Now the first one being is that it will generate you a passive income. So once you have finally got everything set up, you've got tenants in place in your property, this will then generate you a rental income which will be relatively quite passive. The second benefit is that the average rental yield is between four to seven percent in this country. The findings are from SDL Property Auctions. I'll put a link in the description box down below. But as you can see from the table, that location plays an important role in the amount of rental return that you can expect from your property. Manchester leads the way with an average of 7.29%, followed by Nottingham and Portsmouth. London is sitting between 4.72 so there is a massive difference. The way that these returns are calculated is by taking the total amount of rental income that you get in a year and dividing it by the price that you paid for the property. So for example, if my monthly rental income is 1,250, this makes it over a year 15,000 pounds in rental income. And the price of my property that I paid for was 350K. So 15,000 divided by 350K gives me a rental yield of 4.3%. I am still putting this four to 5% return as a pro because I know what you're thinking, oh, four to 5%, that still doesn't seem like a lot of money. Um, however, it still beats the average inflation rate that we get in this country, which is about 2% per year. And it definitely beats any savings account rates that we are currently experiencing. We're in a time period now where we're experiencing the lowest interest rates of all time. I looked at my bank account and they are currently sitting at 0.09%, 0.01% even, which is really nothing. So it is still a pro because even on the lower end of this average, it is still beating the savings account and if you manage to get to the seven percent this is kind of generating the same returns that you can expect if you invested in the market as well the third benefit is that compared to other investments this investment is typically quite easy to grasp which is why i think it does appeal to the first time buyers market as well i do think that for most of us um, investing in the property market is something that we are taught quite earlier on this is something that you typically our parents would have done but also i think that the benefit is that buying a house is actually a very tangible asset Asset. So you actually see it, you can make changes to it, and then once you've got renters coming in, you can actually see the money coming in, and that concept is quite an easy one to grasp compared to other investments, like investing in a stock, for example, where you put your money to a company which is then floating on the stock market and the return that you get is based on their performance. And yeah, that doesn't make quite as much sense as maybe buying a house, renting it, and then getting the money. Now moving on to the cons. Now the first one is, is that it does have high startup costs when compared to other forms of investing. Buy to let properties do require you to have a lot of capital, particularly at the beginning. And even if you're getting a mortgage, the deposit requirement is a lot higher than other norms. So because of these large numbers, you really do need to start thinking, okay, what opportunities will you be missing out on because so much of your money is going to this type of investment. Now the second con is that you will have to account for some months where the property will be empty, particularly at the beginning between the gap of you actually getting your first property to you finding your first tenants. And even when you get tenants, tenants typically stay within properties on a short term basis. So there will be some gaps in between tenancy agreements where the property will also be empty too. And an empty property means no rental income for yourselves. So the property will purely be a cost during those times. Now the third con is the high fees. Now buying a house in general does come with a lot of fees. You've got mortgage fees, you've got stamp duty tax, you've got solicitor fees, you're gonna have to pay council tax afterwards, you've got maintenance and repairs even after you've bought the property. So there is a lot of costs to consider. However, since 2016, the government have introduced a stamp duty tax surplus on those buying buy to let properties. And this surplus comes with an additional 3% tax. So it is really important that you have an idea of what this number could be because next to your deposit, the stamp duty tax is actually going to be the next biggest fee that you'll have to pay. So yeah, really, really important that you find that out. I'll put a link to a calculator down below. The reason why I am linking the calculator is because this year is very, very complicated when it comes to stamp duty tax. Uh, because of the coronavirus pandemic, we're currently going through a stamp duty tax holiday, which is coming to an end this summer which will see that we will have three different versions of stamp duty tax come into play this year. So um, yeah, use that calculator, 
pick the time frame of where you're most likely going to be purchasing your property and yeah that will throw what the stamp duty tax is going to be like for you one thing to note is that for first time buyers you are exempt from this three percent surplus you will be treated as a home mover under the stamp duty tax rules however before you get into this it is really important to realize that as a first time buyer you are entitled to some stamp duty tax allowances for your first home but this home has to be a home that you'll be living in so if you buy your first property through buy to let you will no longer be classed as a first time buyer and therefore you will lose this benefit of stamp duty tax towards your first home now the next con is that once you do get those tenants in you will now be a landlady or a landlord and this comes with a lot of responsibilities you will be responsible for maintaining the property and making sure that all issues with the tenants are resolved which can be costly from not only a money perspective but also a time perspective as well particularly if the property in question is maybe a great distance from where you currently live so you will have to spend time traveling to and fro to make sure those issues are resolved and the last con is for first-time buyers only and this is that you will lose certain allowances if you buy a property through buy to let I've already mentioned that you will lose your stamp duty tax allowance that you get as a first-time buyer towards your first home but there are other schemes out there that also help first-time buyers get onto the property ladder as well just to name a few you have the lifetime ISA and the help to buy equity loan these schemes are purely reserved for first-time buyers only and they have to be houses that you will be living in so if you get a property through buy to let you won't be eligible for either of these schemes if any of them were of interest to you so is buy to let a good investment now those that have been involved in buy to let have had their wallet squeezed over the last few years this is due to the introduction of the three percent surplus charge on stamp duty tax but also some tax benefits which were lost if you were a landlady or a landlord however that is not to say that the return on your money is not a good one looking back at the Table we mentioned earlier you can see that the average rental yield is between four and seven percent now although these numbers are not gobsmacking nor will they make you rich overnight these numbers do beat the average inflation rate which typically stands around about two percent here in the UK and it by far beats the interest that you'll get if your money was just sitting in a random savings account and despite Boris's attempts to try and change a generation rent to a generation buy without major reforms the generation nowadays is likely going to be a generation rent with numbers suggesting that one third of UK Millennials will be renting until they hit retirement which isn't obviously ideal however from a buy to let perspective it does build confidence that you will always be able to fill in your properties with tenants and on the flip side for an investment with such a high cost compared to other forms of investing the return on your investment just doesn't really quite cut it the average long-term return that you can expect if you had invested your money within the market is between 6 and 10 percent for example the S&P 500 which is made up of America's top 500 companies and is considered the benchmark when measuring market performances has an average return of 10 percent which has almost lasted a century and in addition to this investing in the market is relatively cheap nowadays thanks to the progress in technology apps like Moneybox Trading 212, Wealthify, just to name a few, you can get started with investing with just as little as a few pounds. So to answer the question about whether buy to let is a good investment or not, well, that's just really down to you. Like with any investment, it is always down to preferences. If you're someone who really understands properties or just simply enjoys working with properties, then yes, this is a perfect investment for yourself. However, if you're someone who prefers just to shove their money within a fund rather than dealing with their tenants' boiler issues, then maybe not so much so yeah it is really just down to your preferences so yeah hopefully this video has cleared up what buy to let does uh, the pros and cons so you can make an informed decision about whether or not this is right for you cool so that is it for this week's episode let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on buy to let were there any other pros and cons that I've missed out that you think are worth mentioning do drop a comment down below it'll be good to have a discussion with you guys and yeah of course if you did find this video really really useful I would appreciate if you hit that like button that does wonders for the growth of my YouTube channel and as always I release a video every single week so if you want to keep up to date with those hit the subscribe button too see you later bye